Welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carey is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please welcome your host, Dr. Carey Drisga. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Functional Medicine Radio Show, the only internet radio show dedicated to giving you real solutions to improve your health. Not only are they real solutions, but they're natural solutions as well, because as you know, the one and only true wealth you have is your health. I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc, and I'm committed to helping you find the root cause of your health problem, fix the cause with natural treatments, so you can feel normal again and live your life to the fullest. Just a quick bit of housekeeping before I introduce today's special guest. I'm so happy to announce my first book is in print. The title is Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again, Fixing the Root Cause of Your Fatigue with Natural Treatments. I've discovered 14 root causes of fatigue. I like to call them the fatigue factors. And in this book, I explain eight of the 14. I've had some amazing feedback on how easy it is to read and understand. It's not full of technical doctory language like most books written by doctors are. And of course, the book also includes my own personal fatigue story, along with four other stories from real fatigue cases from my private practice. It's available in paperback and Kindle form, so if you'd like a copy, you can find it on Amazon or on my website, www.drcarrie.com. That's it for our housekeeping, so let's get started. I'm very excited about this week's show because we will be talking about breasts, breast health, and my special guest expert, her personal journey on how she was able to heal her breast cancer naturally. Her name is Dr. Veronique Desaunier. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Dr. Veronique Desaunier, she likes to be known as Dr. V, has studied chiropractic, bioenergetics, meridian stress analysis, homeopathy, and digital thermography. After 30 years in active practice, she decided to retire and devote her time sharing her personal healing journey with breast cancer. Her years of experience and research have culminated as the Seven Essentials, which is a step-by-step coaching program. Dr. V is a best-selling author and her book is Heal Breast Cancer Naturally. Her website and her personal healing journey have touched the lives of thousands of women around the globe. Dr. V, thank you so much for being my special guest today on this episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. Thank you, Dr. Carey. I'm thrilled to be a part of your show. Thanks for the invitation. So Dr. V, a lot of our listeners are very interested in this topic of breast health and a lot of them are either suffering with breast cancer or they know somebody personally that is suffering with breast cancer. Can you first tell us about your journey and why you're so passionate about sharing this message of hope to women around the globe? Absolutely. I'd love to share my story. You know, really my story started when I was 16. I was turned on to chiropractic at that time and and nutrition, and I knew it was one of those light bulb moments, and I said, this is what I want to do with my life. Um, So fast forward, graduated from Life Chiropractic College in Georgia, and I was bringing wellness to the world. Practice was very successful. It was rocking along. In 1983, my father is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Well, he was given no hope and was told to go home and die, which he did in about six weeks. And I remember during that six week period how, how you know, my whole world was turned upside down because I, I had seen some of my patients reverse cancer by different you know, natural healing methods. And I kept asking the doctors, surely there's something you could do for him. And they said, no, there's nothing we can do. So I took it upon myself to Go to the library, 1983, no internet back then, uh, did some research, started calling different cancer clinics, and there weren't that many at the time. But I realized there was something that could be done for him, but unfortunately for my father, it was too late. 
Um, fast forward 10 years, you know, I started applying all these principles in my practice. I um, was attracting people literally from all over North America, seeing amazing results with um, people reversing lupus and uh, all kinds of autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, MS, cancer. And it was because they were applying the laws of nature and they were taking responsibility for their health. Um, my mother's diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in 1993, and she decided to have a lumpectomy, and she had radiation to the point that it blistered her breast, and it was red hot till the day she died. But she chose, you know, she didn't want to do any chemo, so she chose to do my anti-cancer protocol. So she came to see me from, you know, a little French community in Canada and came to Georgia, and she followed the protocol and never had an issue with cancer again. And one day in uh, 2004, almost 10 years later, I'm rushing to work in the shower and doing a breast exam and I felt this lump in my left breast. And I knew right away, I knew innately that it was not a benign, benign cyst. So long story short, I started um, on my healing journey and I chose to do everything uh, naturally because I'd seen in my practice what traditional medicine had done to so many of my patients. And on the flip side, I saw the benefits of, of using natural medicine. And so for two years, I did a lot of um, personal healing internally. Uh, I did a lot of juicing, colonics, uh, detoxification. Um, I used um, a salve on the, on the tumor itself to expel it from the breast. I did a high dosages of proteolytic enzymes. So I, I did a lot of things. And, and Throughout that two-year journey, I kept asking myself, you know, why would somebody like me develop breast cancer? I thought I was doing everything right. I was under chiropractic care. I'd had home births, breastfed my children. I ate organic before organic was in style. And yet somebody like me developed breast cancer. So as I was on that journey, I started to realize that there were pieces of the puzzle that I had missed. And that's how I eventually developed the uh, seven essentials. Because if you follow those seven specific steps, you never have to fear cancer again. I know the cancer statistics here in Canada are one out of three people will develop cancer within their lifetime. And in Ottawa, where I practice, it's one out of two. So it's very, it's very shocking. And, and a lot of us are in fear, a lot of women, especially are, are in fear of breast cancer, especially. So there are so many different myths about breast cancer. Can you tell us about some of them? You know, we've been told that hormones can cause cancer. And we've been hearing more about the BRCA gene, you know, uh, with, uh, 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 what's the actress's name? Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Angelina Jolie. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we've been hearing about the BRCA gene, you know. So can you tell us about some of these myths? Absolutely. And, and that's one thing that keeps women in fear is these myths. So that's why I'm very passionate about clarifying certain things. And I would say the top one, myth number one, would be that your hormones cause cancer. We all know women who say, well, I've got this kind of cancer and it's estrogen positive or this positive. And, you know, they want to, you know, they want to suppress my hormones so the cancer doesn't grow. Well, if your hormones were the cause of cancer, then every 20 year old on this planet would be raging cancer, right? So what you have to look at is, you know, what is it that's driving that aggressive estrogen? And there's usually a couple of issues. The first one is what we call xenoestrogens or false estrogens that we get from the environment. Uh, pesticides, herbicides, plastics, uh, aluminum from antiperspirants. Aluminum is classified as a metalloestrogen. It actually mimics and stimulates estrogen in the body. Um, uh, lotions and potions that you put on your skin. There's, there's certain chemicals in there that also mimic estrogen. So it's very important to be aware of that and really limit your exposure. And secondly is how you metabolize estrogen. If the estrogen is not metabolized properly and broken down into simple non-aggressive metabolites through liver detoxification, 
then yes, you may have an accumulation of the aggressive estrogens in your body. So the key is really taking responsibility of what you're putting in your environment, on your body, in your body, and also learning how to detox the liver and support the liver so that you can uh, really met metabolize the estrogens properly. So that's one of the myths. Uh, another myth is, uh, let's talk about the BRCA gene. You mentioned Angelina Jolie. You know, we've been scared through Hollywood hype um, that if we have the BRCA gene, we're, we're doomed uh, to, to die a horrible death with breast cancer. Well, in reality, the BRCA gene is actually a protective gene, and it mutates as a result of radiation and as a result of environmental toxicity. Now, if there is a slight mutation in the gene that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to have breast cancer because we now know through the study of epigenetics and nutrigenomics which means your food can affect your gene expression that your dna isn't your destiny anymore that you do have a large measure of control in how your genes are expressed for example um, broccoli sprouts there's a specific uh, nutrient in broccoli sprouts called sulforaphane and sulforaphane literally turns on over 200 protective genes in your body and it literally kills breast cancer cells curcumin very much the same thing it turns off the inflammatory genes it causes death to cancer cells and you know we could we could go on and list i'm sure dr carey you're very familiar with a lot of this that there's so many natural substances in food that literally kill cancer and boost your immune system. So Dr. V, are, what other specific nutrients or supplements should women be aware of if they want to prevent breast cancer? You just mentioned about broccoli sprouts and curcumin. Can you talk a little bit more about them or, or other nutrients that are beneficial? The, the two key ones that, I, I, that are very simple and I like to mention to women because sometimes they get so overwhelmed with all the information, vitamin D. Yeah, if you could yeah. only get your vitamin D levels checked, and I don't know how to translate, I don't know if it's the same uh, levels in Canada, but I know in the States it's 80 to 100 NGs per ml. That's a, a healthy level for vitamin D in breast cancer prevention. And that's a, such a simple test to have done through your medical doctor, or you can even order little kits. I've got those kits available on my website. Um, one finger prick and you know what your vitamin D levels are. Because vitamin D has been shown to literally put breast cancer cells to sleep and to kill them. I mean, there was an ABC um, uh, news coverage several years ago and I've got the video clip where you can see the culture of breast cancer cells and they put in a few drops of vitamin D let it sit for a day or two and 90% of the breast cancer cells are dead um, and the next one is iodine iodine is a really an important one because we are iodine deficient for several reasons we're deficient because of the lack of iodine in our food and not enough in the um, the um, the soil and in the fish that we're eating. Um, and secondly, we're exposed to so many halides such as bromide, chloride, and fluoride. And these compete with uh, iodine in your body and they literally kick the iodine out. Statistically, women that have sluggish thyroids and are on thyroid medication are twice as likely to develop breast cancer than those who are not. So iodine is very, very important part of breast cancer prevention. So for our listeners in Canada, if we just go back to the vitamin D, because we do use different measurements, the ideal levels for vitamin D would be 125 to 250 nanomoles per liter. And, okay. uh, oh, and I'm so happy that you mentioned about the iodine. I think I think the majority of us are deficient in iodine. And, and what do you recommend as far as testing for iodine? There's a simple iodine test that you can do. It's a home-based test. Some doctors test in the blood, but that's really not accurate. The best kind of test is a 24-hour loading test. 
basically uh, you order the kit from my website and um, the kit arrives to your home you take follow the instructions you take four little capsules of iodine and you collect your urine for 24 hours and then you send a sample back to the lab now when I get the results I'll consult with you and let you know what the numbers are and how much you should supplement with iodine but the theory behind it is that if there's very little iodine in the urine, that means your body is really sucking it up and holding on to it because it's so deficient. So the less there is in the urine, the more deficient you are. And so it's a really good barometer. And, and I've seen it take a year, a year and a half sometimes for the iodine stores to be, um, to be fulfilled because people are so deficient. It takes time for the body to reabsorb. And many of them are just detoxing the bromide and it, it, you know, may give them a little bit of a detox initially, but, you know, we're exposed to bromide through flame retardants, our clothing, the mattresses, our cars, all our electronics have bromide in them. So it's really important to supplement with iodine. Yeah, I think a lot of listeners don't really know how important iodine is. They they probably think that we we get enough from just like eating iodized salt, but we really don't. And iodine is important for thyroid health and ovary health, but also breast health. Vitally important. That's... So I'm so glad that you mentioned vitamin D and iodine. Now, yeah, and and. Sorry, ahead, I was just going to say, ahead. too, that the, you know, the iodine um, studies have, have gone on for, this is based on over 20, 25 years of, of studies and research by um, Dr. Abrams and Dr. Brownstein, who've, you know, who've really focused on iodine. So it's it's not a fad, it's it's a fact. I know, I just got done reading Dr. Brownstein's book on iodine, and, and it's one that I recommend. Very good, absolutely. Dr. V, so I wanted to switch gears and ask you about how to diagnose like early detection for breast cancer. So we know it takes like five to eight years for cancer to manifest as a lump or a bump detectable in the body. So are there any specific, specific tests that can help detect breast cancer at a very early stage? Well, this is another thing I'm so passionate about um, because if women had, uh, or anybody for that matter, had you know five to 10 years to know that there may be cancer developing in their body and that they could be proactive, they could prevent uh, so much heartache. Um, you know, the, the typical tests that traditional medicine uses finds the cancer when it's already been there for a long time and it's a lump or a bump and they try to, you know, kill the, the lump or a bump rather than trying to get to the cause. So there are specific tests. Um, there are specific blood tests that detect cancer when it's less than the size of a pinhead. That's how tiny it is. And it's detected through measurements of specific enzymes or hormones that cancer cells give off. Um, there's, an, uh, there's a test called Oncoblot. Uh, which can tell you if you have cancer and actually tells you where the cancer is at a very, very early stage. And then another test that I like to use, <clears throat> excuse me, is thermography. Thermography cannot diagnose cancer, but what it can do is it can tell you if there's physiological changes going on in the body. So, so what does that mean? Um, if there's inflammation, occurring as a result of a lot of blood flow to a certain area of the breast or maybe inflammation in the liver area then when the technician takes the picture of the of the body the infrared heat that's coming off that those areas is going to be hot red so it's going to show up in the image compared to something that's cool which is going to be more blue and, and green so it's a great tool to discover if there's actual physiological changes going on in the breast um, if there's potentially some problems developing it's not 100% accurate. Nothing is 100% accurate. It, you know, it, it, statistically, it's about 97% accurate. Um, but it's it's a great tool. No compression, no pain, no radiation, and it's it's a wonderful screening tool for women. So, Dr. V, how can our listeners find out where they can have a breast thermography done, or how they can get this oncoblot, oncoblot blood test done? Well, for thermography, if you go to the website thermologyonline.org, that's thermology, T-E-T-H-E-R-M-O, 
L-O-G-Y, thermologyonline.org. You'll see a list of certified clinics in um, many countries, and I know they do have them in Canada. Yes. And that'll give you a good idea. And as far as the uh, blood test that I was talking about, if you go to my website, breastcancerconqueror.com, and go to shop, it'll bring you to the store area, and then you just go to essential number seven, which is very early detection with thermography and blood tests. And so there you'll see all the different lists of tests. And of course, if you have any questions about which test would be best for you, you can email me at Dr. V, DRV, at breastcancerconqueror.com. Thank you. And for our listeners out there, I'll make sure that all of those links are in our podcast notes so that it's easy for you to find. So if a woman has breast cancer and wants to heal her body with less toxic methods than chemotherapy and radiation, and what are some of her choices? There are a lot of choices. Um, excuse me. The, um, you know, the, the, the first thing to do is to make informed decisions. And I know there's a lot of information out there, and, and that's one of the main complaints that I hear is that there are women are confused, frustrated, overwhelmed. Who do I believe? Where do I start? Which is why I created my, my coaching program. Um, and and what, I, what I like about what I do is that it's a simple step-by-step -step process because you have to address all aspects of healing the body. Um, you have to look at your food, you have to reduce your toxic exposure, you have to balance your energy, which means your hormones, your sleep, your exercise, um, chiropractic care. You've got to heal your emotions because if you don't heal your emotions, you're not going to heal as properly as you, as you could. You've got to look to see what's in your mouth. You've got to look at the dental connection uh, because 93% of women who have breast cancer also have one or more root canals. Um, and then there's many, many options with uh, nutrients and supplements that boost the immune system and then weaken the cancer cells. And then, you know, lastly is just applying all these things and monitoring. Very, very important. I, I, I talk to too many women who think that if they just juice and take a few supplements, their cancer is going to go away. How do you know what's happening in your body unless you monitor? So I'm very, very strict about doing blood tests, putting people on a protocol for 90 days, checking the blood again to see if our numbers are coming down. If not, we need to adjust. And, and so just monitoring is very important. Don't guess when it comes to your life. I really love your approach, Dr. V, because it really addresses the whole body. So can you tell us more about your program about the seven essentials and why you consider it to be a foundation for creating such vibrant health? Well, as I mentioned earlier, when I was going through my, my personal healing journey, I, I recognized that there were some serious loopholes or some serious holes in, in my program. And that was one of the reasons why I developed breast cancer. And so as I put these steps together, I realized that it really covers all the bases. And um, so just to go through them again, you know, essential number one is to let food your, be your medicine. We know that now with science that the, the nutrients that are in food surpass anything that we can put in a, in a supplement. You know, food is your foundation and you have a choice. You either feed the cancer or feed your body. It's as simple as that. And, you know, you want to make sure that you try to eat more alkaline and, um, you know, more raw. Um, you know, you there's no cookie cutter. You have to kind of address it per each individual, but that's kind of the general uh, format when it comes to essential number one. Essential number two is to reduce your toxic exposure, and that includes everything that's in your home, that you put on your skin, um, how to detox with everything from infrared saunas to coffee enemas to um, uh, castor oil packs, you know, all kinds of ways to detox the body. Number three is to balance your energy. And that means making sure that your electrical energy is flowing properly because we are electrical beings. Um, and so chiropractic care, acupunct acupuncture, qigong, exercise, sleep. If you don't get proper sleep, you're actually turning off your cancer protective genes. So sleep is extremely important. Uh, and your hormones, balancing your hormones. And there's you know simple saliva tests that you can do to see where your hormone levels are at. 
Uh, essential number four is to heal the emotional wounds. And again, that's such an important part because if you keep doing the things you've always done, you're going to get the same results. So you have to change your beliefs. You have to change how you manage your stress. You have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive others. So there's a lot to healing the emotional body. Um, essential number five is to you know, educate yourself when it comes to biological dentistry. See a dentist that specializes in that and will help you in removing the toxic metals in your mouth and doing it appropriately. Um, essential number six is to repair your body with superfoods and therapeutic plants. So this involves everything that we talked about, like the curcumin and the broccoli sprouts and the iodine and the vitamin D and uh, you know, there's proteolytic enzymes and blood root and, uh, you know, so many things that, that go into that. And then essential number seven, again, is the early detection with, uh, with thermography and specific blood work to find out if you have cancer. And then secondly, to monitor your progress as you're going through a protocol. Dr. V, I love that that program, and again, that addresses the whole body. I have so many more questions for you, but we are starting to run low on time. So how can our listeners find out more about you? Do you have a website? Um, do you have a Facebook page? I do. My website is Breast Cancer Conqueror with an O-R at the end, breastcancerconqueror.com. And uh, you can connect with me through there. You can send me an email. I've got all kinds of articles. I've got free ebooks that you can download. Um, I have a weekly newsletter. I have recipes. I have over 200 recipes, delectable dishes on my blog. And then I'm also on Facebook. It's uh, breastcancerconqueror.com as well. And I've got lots of followers and share lots of interesting stories on there as well. Fantastic. So again, for our listeners, I'll make sure all of those links are in the podcast notes. Dr. V, thank you so much for being my special guest today. This has been such an awesome interview. Thanks, Dr. Carey. It's been fun. And I, I appreciate you sharing my message of hope with your audience. Absolutely. All right. That, that wraps up this very special episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show with Dr. Veronique Dessonier. And I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in today. And I'd like to invite you back next week for another episode of the Functional Medicine Radio Show. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, the Functional Medicine Doc. Have a great week, everyone. You've been listening to the Functional Medicine Radio Show with your host, Dr. Carrie Drizga, known internationally as the Functional Medicine Doc. Dr. Carey is committed to helping patients find the root cause of their health problems and fixing the cause with natural treatments so they can feel normal again. Dr. Carey is the founder of Functional Medicine Ontario and is the author of the hit book, Reclaim Your Energy and Feel Normal Again. Please tell your friends about the Functional Medicine Radio Show, and we'll see you next week with more from Dr. Carey.